Well, the film's called Laura, um, and uh, initially it was supposed to be a portrait of this woman that uh, I was uh, enchanted by. Uh, but very soon it became clear during the shooting that, uh, that the most interesting thing about it was really our relationship. The relationship between Laura and I does change. There is one phase of enchantment in which I'm totally fascinated by her, and I'm a little bit gullible and naive, and I'm just like this little boy, a 25-year-old boy looking at her with those eyes, you know. And then the second half, the story changes a bit, you know. And I start to become disenchanted by her. So I think the film tells that story of enchantment and disenchantment. And it's like any love story, you know. It really, I think it works almost as a fiction because you can see a relationship evolving in front of your eyes. And I remember I had a professor, a film, a film, uh, a film teacher at school who used to say that uh, every film is about a relationship. It can be a man on an island and it's still about a relationship. And I don't believe the documentaries, they can really summon, summon up uh, 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 who is one character. Uh, but films can really, they are really good in, in, in narrating and describing a relationship. And I think that if this relationship changes through time, then you have a real experience, a real narrative experience. And, I be, and that's what I try to accomplish with the film, in including myself in it. I shot the film in two parts, in two, uh, two different moments, two, two winters. And uh, after shooting the first parts, in which I tried to avoid being inside the film, uh, I went back home and I started looking at the footage and I realized that it was necessary for me to be in it. So when I came back the second time, the second winter, to shoot again, I totally incorporated that. And during the editing, uh, I resisted that a little bit because it was really hard to, re to look at myself and to recognize some of the decisions I had made, which were very bad decisions, some of them. Um, and it was really helpful to have some people with me, a screenwriter and an editor, uh, who had a more objective eye and, and sometimes I would say, no, I can't believe I did that. And they would go, no, yes, you did, that's you. And I finally accepted that. Well, um, you know, Laura is a title that it's, it has been in many movies. Uh, if you go in the computer in IMDb, for instance, and you go to Laura, there are many Lauras. Maybe it's like the title that exists the most, you know. And in a way, I, that attracted me, you know. I sort of wanted her to be just one more Laura amidst so many. But yes, I always had Otto Preminger in my mind for some reason. In film school, it was the first paper I wrote. It was about uh, Laura by Otto Preminger. So it's a film that uh, really I connected with. I really love melodrama, you know, and he's a master in melodrama. And the film has no direct relationship with, uh, with uh, Preminger's work, um, um, but it was always in my mind, you know, as a character of a movie. Laura is like a character of a movie. The name already evokes that. So, uh, and I thought that I should use that. And in fact, uh, one of the, there's a, there, I think there's a very special soundtrack in the film composed by Patrick Laplan, who's also who's a jazz musician, and I really wanted a jazz New York feel for the film. The whole film takes place in New York uh, during winter, so it's cold, it's jazzy, and uh, and, and I and I gave him the theme of uh, Preminger's Laura that that became very famous in Frank Sinatra's voice, and so he made uh, a, 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 a bossa nova version of it based on its theme which makes sense since she's, uh, she's half Brazilian, half Argentinian, so I wanted to incorporate the, this Latinidad of the character. But I have also some other, um, uh, some other references, you know. Uh, I cannot deny that uh, Grey Gardens is a film that really, it's some, almost like an obvious reference, right? Because it's, it's a classical of the cinema verite in which the filmmakers, they start to appear and they start to be part of the scene with the characters and the, and, and the beauty of the film really is drawn from this relationship, how it evolves, you know. 
Uh, the difference is that uh, in Grey Gardens they were really happy with the film, Laura was not happy with the film at all, but that's another story. Uh, yes, but that was always in the back of my mind, Grey Gardens, and of course, like I, I always loved Cassavetes, I always loved uh, Piala, uh, the cinema that has a lot of energy and is very unpredictable, and where anything can happen, and the actors, in this case, including myself, are always on the verge of a breakdown, and so anything can happen, you know? Like, I love this feeling of having the audience on the, on, on the edge of their seats, not knowing what to expect of the relationship. Eu podia me enfiar no cinema. Vem aqui, Felipe. Vem aqui que eu vou precisar de cover-up. 